you feel it in your heart. You do. You feel the culmination of his expertise and his experiences with every piece you look at. And that sometimes is deafeningly painful. He told me to burn it. I said, what do you want me to do? And he said, just burn it all. Throw it away, burn it all. I wasn't ready to burn it because some of it is absolutely, un it's extraordinary. And honestly, I never knew how much he was doing because there was a lot of house here to hide things in. And when, when we started looking for them after he died, he hid them everywhere. He had them absolutely everywhere. I never knew he was working that much. I never knew he was doing that much. It's extraordinary work about him, but it's also an extraordinary work about the times we lived in and the times we live in now. And I sometimes look at it and think, how did he know that was gonna happen? How did he know? Will Harrington, I don't give a shit how much school he went to. That is heart, soul, and guts all over those pieces. That's what everybody is trying to achieve from everything they do. If you'll look at Oldenburg, Rauschenberg, Stella, etc., they were working with this kind of a medium all along from the 60s on. So he was in a category of similar minds that were working in collage. For me, he was the most interesting person I'd ever met. He, he knew who wrote symphonies. He knew jazz. He knew so much more than I did. It was like soaking up years of, of what I would like to have known was, was what it was like being with him. I mean, it's clear that he's been through school and it's clear he's been through, you know, he's a great renderer. He can paint anything. He could probably paint a dollar bill and you'd spend it. However, at the same time, that doesn't always get you that far because that's a technical skill. And learning a technical skill, you can be a mechanic, that doesn't mean you can make an airplane, right? But at the same time, he, because of his experiences, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, He's been able to harness the, the craft of art and the emotional desperation that art needs to have. And it's an experience that, you know, most people shoot themselves over. He became a painter. His family were all military people. His father um, was in the Marines. His, his aunt was a, a Navy nurse and uh, a commander. He was... He was really glad to be home, um, but he was a different man. It, yeah. We've been chasing these VCs since 8 o'clock this morning. So it's been a long haul until we finally found them. Evidently, they decided to stand and fight. These Viet Cong are elusive. You can't see them. All you can do is hear the bullets as they come at you. They've just moved out on a line to assault this position, hitting it with everything they've got. And if there's any VC in there, that'll sort of help clean them out. All these other artists through the years have been combat artists. I didn't know there was such a coined, horrible term. I mean, it burns my soul to hear that somebody in an office in Washington came up with the idea of making an 18 to 22 year old take a pen to combat. Somebody higher up in the military who's actually been there thinks that that person isn't gonna be destroyed for life and smile at him and watch him get on that fucking plane. I don't know how you do it. I do not and will not ever know how you do it. He just said he was going to Vietnam and then he said he was going to Vietnam as an artist. Not one detail except he was gonna be gone for six months. He was compelled. He, he, it was almost like an artist is supposed to go see what a war is or tell the story. 
and he certainly did that. Um, but it was it was not it was not a joy ride. It was not a joyful thing from the beginning. He picked all the hard places to go. He picked all the hard ways to go. He went to the DMZ. He went on on the chopper pickups. He was into every part of us. Um, and all the time. He wanted to see. He wanted to know. And I think more and more as he was there, he wanted to think about why, really why. That really caused him a lot of, of worry that he would tell me when he came back, I don't know why we're there. I don't know why we're wasting everything. I don't know why we're west wasting people. I have spent my life trying to figure out what makes good art. And his work, it touches you on a level, on an inexplicable level that you don't have any ability to control or understand. But that's good art. You know, every artist I've ever met wishes they could vomit what he vomits onto a piece of paper. but they can't because, you know, what makes him do that makes him a hard to live with guy and a fabulous fucking artist. He started teaching at, at um, Indiana State and met a bunch of other artists who were really good colleagues. And that was a really good shift for him. But coming back was hard because there would be times when he was walking along and people would say terrible things about him having gone to Vietnam. Indiana State um, pretty much cut down their entire art department. And so he left and we went back to this place we built up on Bent Mountain, 100 acres. And uh, he was trying to get a job near Virginia and I just went and got a job because I could, I was much more flexible and he was there working with him, with him by himself. And some of his work is very, very dark. I was at one point certain he was gonna commit suicide. He wasn't painting, he wasn't drawing. He was chopping wood. That was all he was doing, was chopping wood. And he was a little gruff, and sometimes a lot gruff, and sometimes not talking at all. And that um, worried me a lot. And I don't know what made him shake out of it, except he went back to work and he built himself a studio, a very big studio by himself. And I think the act of making a studio made him feel like he was gonna be an artist again. De Kooning dismantles the woman, the form, into abstraction. He calls it action painting. It becomes known by Clement Greenberg as abstract expressionism. Larry Rivers, he's, he's a guy who's more literal. He comes back to the form and he paints a box of cigars. And he calls Andy Warhol over to his loft because he's on 14th Street, Warhol's over on 16th Street. And he goes, I'm gonna call this form popular culture arts. And Warhol goes, no, no, I got a better idea. Let's call it pop art, right? So they come up with pop art. With that comes Lichtenstein and all those guys, right? And then now Harrington is living a private life outside of them, but following this, right? This is 65, 66, 67, right? Now comes Rauschenberg, Stella Oldenburg. They take that concept and move it a step further 
and they start playing with collage. They start putting things together. Jeff Koons does a show of vacuum cleaners just all over the wall. And so they start doing all kinds of things, but the premise is that it is American culture, good and bad, right? That is where Will Harrington gets permission to start playing with this and take it on his offshoot. Most of the time he worked all day, every day, uh, and usually most of the evening. He was a loner. He was a person who had, had to do what he had to do. It wasn't a, of choice. He, he, it was no choice. He had to do this. So this group, Rauschenberg, Oldenburg, Stella, and Will Harrington, they have not had a specific movement that's been coined other than post-pop, post-pop. And that is where he exists. However, the thing with Will's work is that it still, it has the, all of the presences I'm telling you about are for a museum, maybe not for a wall. Right? Because you feel everything he felt when he did it. Banksy. Is Banksy for your wall? When you look at Banksy, for example, who calls himself the outlaw, the, the great modern outlaw artist, well, it was done in 1967 when Will Harrington started being that outlaw. He was doing it long before people thought it was cool or presentable for a wall. Rauschenberg, Stella, Oldenburg. They were in New York doing that kind of collage, right? They were collaging what was going on, but they were making it pretty because they were living off this shit. They had to make a living. So they can't shoot the foot of the society that's spending the money on it. He never had to worry about that because he didn't care from the get-go. He didn't care if it was going to look good with somebody's couch. That's a hindrance and fantastic. It is bipolar to the sale. He had serious cancer and then we began to, they began to look for what the source of it was and he had uh, lung cancer, which probably came from Vietnam. Agent Orange also has a proclivity to wind up being cancerous having cancer. And then he wanted to take his grandkids to Guatemala, a place he loved. And, and so we took the family to Guatemala. And when he came back, the doctor said that he could continue with the chemotherapy. And he said, how much, how much difference would it make? And he, she said, it will, you will live longer. And he said, how much longer? He said, just as long as you keep doing chemotherapy. And he said, no, thank you. And that's, and then he died six months later. Not willingly. Not willingly at all. He has every right to be in the middle of a history book right, as a piece, and with his heritage, it, it is homage to the warrior. He has to be there, because it's not right to not add 
the PTSD of American life into this. It's not fair. If you just want to have these cushy fucking white fingered guys in New York massaging themselves over their artwork, how boring is that, right? This is it. So that's why I think he's important. That was really what I hope, is that people, other people can see what he saw and begin to see today that some of the same stuff is going on and that he has some, something not to share with him, but, but to want you, want everybody to have a chance to see the things that are not true. I was amazed that somebody could do that. Amazed that somebody could have that sense of purpose and that he could, he could keep doing, on, doing it without somebody saying good things. It's an unquenchable drive that you must have. It's a whole. It is an unquenchable drive and whole that makes you a very difficult person, but a great artist. And that's what you need. You have to have that all. Is that Will Harrington? You think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes, it is.